Hey guys, and welcome to our review for Rocket Man, directed Rocket by Man. Dexter Fletcher, starring Taron Egerton. D. Fletch? D. Fletch. He's back, baby. Taron Egerton, starring T. as Elton John, as well Richard Madden, Jamie Bell, Bryce Dallas Howard, among other uh, actors as well. Uh, my name is Scott Ellis. I'm joined here by Phil Clark. I'm back. Yeah, you're back. Glad you can make Big it. Hiatus. It's been a while. Back. Been going on some uh, some trips. Some trips. Yeah. World's been traveling. a trip. World traveling. Some, uh, psychedelic trips. Mm -hmm. Hop across the pond, as people <laughs> say. Europe. Been there. Been yeah. There. Mm, you know yeah. who's from there? No. The singer, Elton John. No way. Yeah. That's crazy. Movie, but Ever heard? Wild. Of no. Yeah, also yeah. joining us is Adam Franey. I've too been. Uh, not traveling anywhere, but I've <laughs> nice, been here nice. a lot. I like the shirt. Thanks, man. Salmon. Yeah. yeah. You, guys, you guys dressed up. I dressed down, I guess, today. I, I uh, wanted to go Rocket it. Man, big, though. Big interview. Uh, biopic of Elton John. I wouldn't call it a straight biopic, though. Yeah, uh, but not. starting in his early life and on to his musical career and mm. etc. cetera. Um, really? Adam, let's start with you. With me. Uh, what do you think about Rocket Man? Now, Dexter Fletcher, I believe he finished Bohemian Rhapsody. Indeed, indeed. In Brian Singer's absence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he has some experience with the musical biopic genre, specifically. Yeah, he does, he does. What do you think about Rocket Man? Well, it's a beautiful song, arguably one of the best songs of all time. Uh, the movie. Oh, the, <laughs> the movie. Yeah. Uh, massive Elton John fan. I don't know if you guys know that about me. I did not. I didn't. Had no yes. idea. Yeah. Shouts out to our producer, Tim, staring at me. <laughs> didn't know either. Um, Shocked. I was very excited for this movie. Wow, I did not wow. know that either. Yeah, this is... This, this is your most anticipated of 2019. Of all time. <laughs> so, yeah. Wow. Uh, this was my Bohemian Rhapsody for Switty. What Bohemian Rhapsody was to Switty. Right. Shouts out to Switty. Couldn't be here. Uh, <laughs> there you are. Um, I liked it. I did not love it. Did not hate it. But I liked it. It was fine to you. It was fine, <laughs> some would say. What did you, what, did you like Bohemian Rhapsody? I also thought Bohemian Rhapsody was fine. Okay. It's okay. gonna, I feel like it's going to get a lot of comparisons to Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh, yeah. Because it, of the so proximity. Really. And... Uh, the genre too, too. Like they're both, of course. They're both like, and Dexter Fletcher being a part of both. Rami Malek won. Rami Malek won. Taron getting Oscar buzz, early Oscar buzz. Um, and after Rami winning, I can't say that it's like impossible. I think he could be nominated. I think he could very well be nominated yeah. if Rami wins. Yeah, yeah, right. For Bohemian Rhapsody, I think Taron's gonna at least get nominated for this. Yeah, it's like, w what would the difference be, you know what I mean? Like, I would say they're probably equally good. I think Taron Edgerton was very good. It's a very uh, showy, sort of like surface level performance, I thought. Like, very flashy. Mm -hmm. um, much like uh, Remy. You know, he looks the part. Okay. He, I definitely appreciate that he actually sang, unlike Remy Malik. Mm. He was uh, belting out tunes. <laughs> yeah, he, he gave his own spin to it a little bit, right? Yeah. Because it, he wasn't, <clears throat> you know, trying to exactly mimic it. He gave a little bit of his own, but he did a very good job of evoking Elton John. Yeah, I always appreciate, like, Bradley Cooper and Stars Born or something. Anytime an actor sings like for Le a film. Like Les Mis, Like for Les example. Mis. Yeah, it's a classic. It's just, yeah. like, I don't know, I, I really respect it because they're not singers, like, that's as crazy By as trade. anybody else just getting up there and singing. Um, yeah, I liked the musical numbers. I didn't really expect it to be a musical, basically. Like Bohemian Rhapsody, or like most generic biopics about musicians, like obviously you see them performing. But it's in the, in the <laughs> sort of setting of them actually performing on right. stage is where <laughs> yeah. you hear the songs. I know it's going to be like abstract. Like, Fantasy-ish. Yeah. Ish. Like, his classic songs cut in and out of dialogue between characters in the movie, and they'll just open up into a big song and dance. Or where, like, the Her young movie. Ellen John breaks out into song, and then <laughs> his father and mother and, you know, yeah, grandmother, grandmother. Are also join him in song. Yeah, they, res <laughs> they respond in song. In, in song, yeah. And so which is interesting. 
I really like the abstract, fantastical performance pieces, like uh, Saturday when he's like doing that for the first time, and you get the time jump to him when he's older, and mm-hmm. he takes it out to the street. Like Taron Edgerton's performance in those moments, I thought was like awesome. So his physicality, yeah, the dancing, like while singing, while emoting and everything. And, uh, you know, when he's on piano and he starts like floating away and everyone in the audience kind of starts floating up. That was a cool scene. I loved all that. And it's funny because as I was watching it, I could just think of like the plebs hating it. Being like, what the fuck is this? Like, what is happening? Yeah, because like, I know. Like not Elton fans, obviously. Yeah, just like. Yeah, exactly. Just people that loved Bohemian Rhapsody and just the generic sort of, uh, you know, f- generic, like, matter-of-factness of it. I could just see them not being able to comprehend something that's, like, not supposed to be taken literally. The Queen fans. The Queen fans. The Queen fans. When you'll comprehend. Fans of the Queen. Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, well, what I thought... Didn't you, what didn't you like about it? You seem a little almost nothing like specific. It was same, maybe the same as Bohemian Rhapsody in that, just these like musical biopics are just s- they're yeah. just so formulaic and that's, like that's what I was gonna get to. Yeah, it's like I don't know. It's like the way people complain about superhero movies. I guess how they can be formulaic. It's just, it's there's just, a certain beats, you know. Certain you're beats. A kid, there's always the like some... yeah, the kid, the traumatic uh, childhood, the. The Hard greedy party. fucking yeah. businessman who's like, no, we're going to grind these hits out of you and, like, chomping no, on a cigar. I need to get my musical freedom and then the heart, the drugs and the women and the, you know, exactly. now I'm famous, but I don't love what I'm doing with my life. And, you know, then I need to, you know, yeah. get that redemption going. And Which is why I appreciate all the abstract stuff, because at least it separated it, it a little bit from the pack. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. But yeah, I just like I don't know. I can't believe that they, there there isn't a musician that had like a different story than that. Like every single one feels the exact same to me. It's tough you know what when I mean? everyone has that. All of those people are all music musicians, so there is sort of a similar storyline for a lot of them. Obviously, yeah. the ones that are have an interesting enough story to make a movie about, usually or you know, big enough to be like come from some you know downtrodden experience to become famous. Whereas if you're, right. and I don't know, I don't. If, there are probably some artists out there that have really boring stories, and <laughs> those are the ones that we don't see movies about because they're boring. Yeah. And the interesting ones have, I guess, similar trajectories in their careers, right? But uh, Bill, I want to hear what you think. What uh, do you think about Rocket Man? A bit of a mixed bag for me, I think. Mm. I had some very conflicting feelings for Rocket mm, Man. Thank you. Not a big uh, Elton John fan before. The, not that I didn't like, oh, fuck you Elton hate John. Him. Yeah, you that's fuck I Elton John. hate Elton John. Okay. Oh. Um, but it was, I, I'll start with the positive. I think it was cool for me to listen to all these songs similar to Queen, although I kind of grew up more on Queen in mm-hmm. Bohemian Rhapsody, where I was like, oh, I know this is a Queen song. I know this is a Queen song. With this, it was kind of like, oh, I didn't know Elton did this. Oh, I didn't know Elton did this. Oh, this is a cool song. Oh, you know what I mean? Like, the goats. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't know too much of his discography, but I like, I knew some of them, and I was like, oh, wow, this, and like, this. And so you knew so the that songs. That was, I knew some of the songs. By I didn't know they were by him. So I was like, this is really cool. Um, obviously, Fire. with the way that he was like, he doesn't, he doesn't write all of his songs. And mm-hmm. He performs. He's mm-hmm. able to put out a lot of songs, and that's why he... I'm not saying he's not a great performer or anything like that. Yeah, you're shitting on him, okay. It was great to see him, like, uh, in my opinion, do the crazy performances, because it was kind of like him trying to be who he thought he was supposed to be, yeah. which I thought was really cool. Like, he's going so out of there, because he thinks that's what he's supposed to do, but that's not really jiving with him. Um, mm-hmm. pro- I, I got a few issues with this movie. Um, number one, I felt like I learned some stuff about Elton John. But I could I could tell you facts. I couldn't tell you what like happened. Like, he got married. He got divorced to hmm. a woman. Why? Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. But I, he was married and he was divorced. Like, <laughs> I just literally skip over that like whole thing. It feels a bit fast forwardy. Feels very fast forwardy. Um, I like some of the uh, like you were talking about the everyone's floating mm-hmm. and the bar scene. I like some of those musical numbers. Yes, some cool. of them. Flourishes. I, some of them I felt kind of not that I didn't like the music, but I was like, okay, we're going back 
to this. Like, we're going back to a musical number for a bit. Then we'll mm-hmm. go back to, like, ten minutes of movie, and then we'll go back to a musical number. Like, it just felt very back and forth for me. Mm. Yeah. It was hard for me to, I like, <laughs> engage emotionally with, like, the overarching story because it kind of felt like they would just, like, stop it hard mm. and then, like, pick up immediately, and it just <laughs> felt, like, very... Not that is literally like, what they did. Very, <laughs> very, yeah. like, cut. Like, I felt very, like, abrupt stops in the movie. Like in the is pacing. it because they're cutting to the rehab circle? No, I, you, I, that, I actually like that they were cutting to the okay. rehab circle. I thought that's a good, if you, like, look at his whole career, like, yeah. I think that's an interesting moment to, like, be like, let's start here. And yeah. Kind of, like, have him work through his life, like, like up to now. Retrospectively. And then so when he gets to the end, then we can kind of finish the movie. I think that's a good idea. But I just don't think it was executed well. And then my biggest problem uh, would be if these songs aren't really written by him, mm-hmm. why are they taking them and then putting them to the tune of his life? Mm, interesting. But he wrote the music. He wrote the music. I'm not. No, I'm not saying the music I, and the melody. But like you, we were talking about that scene with like his family in the kitchen, mm-hmm. and it's like that's a great scene. But like. Yeah. He didn't. He I what you're didn't write the song, and we're kind of taking his life, and putting it into the song. I thought about I just, that too. It's kind of un- it's a little weird personal, to me. Right? Yeah. Obviously, if Barry I, is it's a generic song. I'm not saying it's like personal to everybody, no. but like, I just didn't see. It didn't make a lot of sense to me. Unless like he's that. retroactively applying the songs to his maybe life. he could like, be. Oh, I can relate to this. Yeah. I can relate to this. Uh, so yeah. I like there's I things things that I liked. I thought Taryn was good. I thought most of the acting was pretty good. Yeah, I don't think anyone could deny it. Taryn was good. <coughs> Third choice. I'll, I'll jump in. I, well, firstly, I do want to say my mother is a huge uh, Elton John fan, and she saw this movie and loved it. Oh, um, shit. One thing she mentioned to me was that, uh, which she she loved the movie, she thought this part was odd, The <laughs> how the songs didn't fit chronologically with like when they came out and like how they fit in with his life. So she thought that was odd. But they also make sense with what was, what was happening. happening. Yeah. So it's like, and I kind of agree with that. Like, Me too. It, it makes more sense when you realize that. And I kind of figured that might have been the case, you know. But um, it makes sense because, like you said, uh, Bernie was the one that wrote them. Yeah. And not Elton. So, you know, they had to pick the songs that made sense, you know, with his life with where he was in his life and sort of moved them into that, those different periods that made mm-hmm. sense for the movie. Mm-hmm. Right. So narratively that doesn't, that doesn't necessarily bother me that it wasn't written by him. And yet it was to tell his story. I don't know. That, th- that didn't bother me too much. Overall, I, I thought this movie was pretty fun though. I'm not gonna lie. It's a good word. Um, it is very fun. <laughs> and yeah, I agree it's with what you're saying about the, uh, musical biopic, Genre tropes. It's, it's a trope. It's a it's a whole genre now. Yeah, I guess. yeah. <laughs> um, Two movies. Yeah. <laughs> Soon to be more though. There's a uh, there's it's like a Motley Crue movie that's coming out. There's one came on out. Netflix. Oh, it already came yeah, out. Oh, like months ago. <laughs> Apparently that's crazy. Like that's a real. Yeah, yeah. I watched it's like most of it. Apparently that's a really crazy yeah. movie. But there's a lot of these. So I guess it is a genre now. But it is a bit it is a bit tiresome to me personally, um, because we have seen this story a lot and there's not a lot new being done so I did appreciate uh, these different fantasy elements that we got mm-hmm. and the sort of, sort of more musical uh, like musical style elements we got like them breaking out into song you know which is something we normally don't see in these mm-hmm. types of movies so I did appreciate that uh, angle from the director Dexter Fletcher um, I really liked Taron Egerton's performance I liked pretty much everything I thought Richard Madden was good um, as well, kind of see his character change over the course of the movie. That was interesting. Um, and I really like Jimmy Bell as well as uh, Bernie Topin. I think I didn't know about Bernie like before. I'm not a big fan, but like really cool to see like that because they I thought they were really good together on mm-hmm. screen. That was the anchor of the movie for me. Their relationship for sure. It's the heart and soul, obviously. And I think this the same with you know his life as well, right? Yeah. So like, it, it makes a lot of sense. Right. Um. But yeah, over, I don't have much to say except I kind of had fun. I don't yeah. have as much problems with, with some of the things you guys mentioned, but I definitely can't disagree with some of those things. <laughs> I just, it just didn't bother me as much per se. But um, 
yeah, overall, I just, I had, I had a lot of fun. I liked, I appreciated, too, the, uh, how do I say, like, the, how authentic they portrayed Elton. Like, a big criticism of Bohemian Rhapsody is that it was very sugar-coated. Yeah, this, they showed this all the, they wanted the to show all the warts and everything. Everything. You know, all the cocaine use and the sex and drugs. And Unapologetic, yeah. right? Like, Bohemian Rhapsody, I think it was like PG or something. I don't even know the rating, yeah. but not a drug was used. Not a, was it? Like, was no, it nothing? Not on screen. Really? It's implied, but nothing on screen. Really? And no, like, uh, gay, like, love scenes on screen, obviously, in Bohemian Rhapsody, I'm saying. Right. But in this... They're just like, no, this is Elton John. Like, this is what he did. And mm-hmm. I remember Taron Edgerton, he's like very vocal, like kind of like low-key shading Bohemian Rhapsody. He's like, yeah, I wasn't really interested if we weren't going to do it rated R and show the drug use, show, show the sex, show literally everything. And yeah, like they Elton had, John they had balls to do it, I guess, too. right? Yeah, Elton John gave his consent on all this too. Yeah, I think uh, him and... Uh, Taryn Edgerton are good friends now. Yeah. I've heard some interesting stories. Yeah. Together. Um, <laughs> and they performed together at Con. I don't know if you saw that. Right. Insane. I didn't see the... I don't know if... But you heard about it. I heard right? about yeah. it, yeah. Yeah. I saw it. It was so, insane. That's, it's interesting. Um, let's give our ratings and maybe we can talk spoilers if there is anything to mention there. Uh, I'm going to start off and say uh, Heavy 3. I think I liked it more. I looked at what I rated Bohemian Rhapsody. I liked it more than Bohemian Rhapsody, so I'm gonna go Heavy Three as well. I rated Bohemian Rhapsody three. That's high, but I don't know what I don't know what I rated Bohemian. I, I looked it up before. So I, I was like, like the exact same thing, like Heavy Three, because I liked it a tad more than Bohemian Rhapsody. Interesting. Yeah, I might have given a Heavy Three at the time. Let me see but what, retrospect. Yeah, let me see what I think Three's a little high on Bohemian Rhapsody, but I mean, yeah, as someone who didn't know too much, it's like. Enlightening. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's a heavy three. Yeah, I knew it. <laughs> I think yeah. I think movies like this are a good Crazy. gateway for people who like. Oh, I like I know who Elton John is, like, but I didn't know a lot of his music. So this is a cool gateway for me to see some of his music. I think that's good for. Well, I've seen people complain about not enough focus on the music, but that's what I liked about it. Mm. I guess we can give a spoiler alert. Yeah, fair warning if yeah. you haven't seen. Uh, Rocket Man. Rocket Man. <laughs> I was going to say John. I, just, I was John, just looking at Bohemian Lions. Rhapsody on another box. I was like, not Bohemian Rhapsody, not Bohemian Rhapsody. Um, <laughs> don't say do it. Uh, so don't say do it. You've been warned that uh, we will be talking some spoilers. I mean, it, it is a biopic, so. <laughs> I did like the actual Rocket Man. Uh, when I finally got to Rocket Man, the song, I thought that was very well done. Yeah. Like, emotional, oh. almost. Like, just yes. the way it was done. And just him... Literally blasting off <laughs> <laughs> as like a rocket, and then like landing in oh, in yeah. the plane, and then it cuts to the next scene in the plane. I don't know, like it. Deep, it was very, very deep. well done, like the ed- edited. You know what I mean? I like how it, was, it made me feel like he wasn't even present for all that. Like he was so on drugs and everything that it was all just a blur. Mm-hmm. When he's like rocking on the piano and it's just like revolving around him yeah and you're, he's literally in a whirlwind and then yeah. rock gets up to the plane wakes up a week later or whatever yeah like all, all that was just like very well uh like it, again a different way to do it right mm-hmm. like it was so much more interesting to like throw a curveball and just do it that way rather than like okay here's our beat for beat generic fucking biopic I don't have much else to say, yeah, spoiler-wise. I mean, I, like I said, it's, it's, it's his life, so if you know Ellen John, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, they always have to try and manufacture a little bit of uh, drama drama for the sake of it, but not that his life. I haven't heard. Have you guys heard, like, any inconsistencies? Like, what was not true? What was I haven't true? heard anything. No. Rhapsody when when, when he had Rhapsody was like, oh, like this, they didn't yeah. show this. This didn't happen, <laughs> this didn't happen. <laughs> Wrong. This, this is, yeah. <laughs> I don't Not think we, true. I don't think we've had that with I think this with this movie, they kind of, they didn't portray it necessarily as like, chronologically, like, yeah. I mean, they kind of did, but it, there was a lot of cutting back and forth, and it wasn't necessarily about a lot of specific performances. Yeah, they had the Dodger Stadium thing. And they had and him first like performance, they had him like sw- I know that he did end up swearing at some people like he was hammered on stage and just was like cursing at fans at one point and they did kind of have like a a small scene of him doing that and I was like that's cool because like he did actually 
He did got he got blazed for that at one point in his career. Oh yeah. Because he was like hammered and like someone was like, <laughs> like someone said something and he just like said something like just ignorant right Savage in the way. Yeah. And then they booed him and he was like, nah, fuck this. I know he's known like for being very fiery. Yeah. Which I thought they also did pretty well too, like the anger. That That's he, what I mean, yeah, yeah, like showing the warts like you said, Scott. Mm-hmm. Pretty accurate. Yeah. yeah, like they weren't focusing, like there was a little bit of that kind of sprinkled in, but then there was like kind of that montage with like the newspapers and stuff of him like blowing up and like more stuff like that. But it wasn't a lot of like, there was no like live aid scene that was like a recreation right. of some famous right. scene. It was just, you know, you get some elements of that. You know? What do you guys think like, obviously Freddie Mercury's life was cut short, but in this, there's like so much more, like they they stopped quite early like there's so much more of well I guess we can talk about the like little epilogue like little end thing what did you guys think of that nice I guess <laughs> I didn't like it nice what do you mean like the end? is there an when after it, credits <laughs> no like the okay. end, like end of the like, movie when they're like oh it shows here's Elton John real Elton John with, with his, his partner husband. oh yes okay and then he's been living with him and sober this, for 20 years he started years. this charity and blah blah yeah. I just thought it was I couldn't very... even read the charity thing when like it was like up on screen and then it was gone and I'm really? I, I saw like char- like I, I think I read like half it and then it was gone I was like what? 450 million dollars yeah, for AIDS saw... research that's I mean, it's nice, but it, it was very jarring to me. I don't know. Why? I guess because like know. I was I indifferent know. to it. I don't know. I, don't I guess because he's still alive and Freddie's not. So that's kind of like yeah. they still did that in Bohemian Rhapsody. But right. oh yeah. But it, it kind of works, I guess, better because you know he died. Right. So you're kind of like, oh, that's kind of like the obituary at the end of the like, right. experience. But this is like, no, he's living, but like. It was his he's battle doing, with, like, sobriety and He's just, drugs. he's doing great now. He's doing great. He's turned to yeah. life now. Right? I mean, <laughs> at the ending, I guess. It does kind of hammer him all movie. as like, like, you kind of do feel Broken like... He's man. a little debauched, yeah. right? Like, yeah. nobody loves him, like, yeah. drugs, like, fame. Nobody yeah, like, you're him. never going to find alone. love. And yeah. then at the end, it's like, oh, he actually found love. Oh, and he's <laughs> right. been great for okay. 25 years, been sober... Half a billion uh, for AIDS. This great charity. And two kids. Uh, <laughs> it's like, well, what? I, I <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, like, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting because we, like, we know that how he's been doing because he's still alive. But I in the, in the I context say. of the movie, it was a bit... <laughs> and he's a shopaholic and there's just like... Right. Waka waka. He's got all those cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? I would have seen a sequel for this movie. I'll say it. Cause you want to so see a sequel? No, no. <laughs> I would have seen if they didn't tack that all on. Or you could have seen Like, I would have liked to have seen the Lion King portion of his career. I don't know if that his life on from that <laughs> point was as interesting. Well, finding love. Like, I as think, debauched. I think there was something, there could have been stuff there, like Lion King, uh, finding love, like with his husband and having kids and. And right now, in reality, he's coming back for, like, a reunion tour or whatever, like, his final tour and all that stuff. He's done his final tour before, but... Disgusting. If I remember right. correctly. Close. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just interesting. Like, there's a lot... It's just... Like, Freddie Mercury kind of got his whole life. Because yeah. there was no more life to show, really. I think in the in the case of this film, it's sort of... It's, it's giving that backstory that people want to learn more about, right? So that... You know, a lot of people know what's happened to him since because they've been alive for that. Maybe like younger yeah. people, I mean. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, you know, a lot of those people like weren't alive when a lot of stuff was happening. So the movie is more about, you know, how he got to That's me. where he is. <laughs> right. Like Elton John is like Lion King on for me because I'm 26. Right. I didn't know all the wild I mean, that's, just, that's the first time I experienced this movie as well. It's, a lot of people our age did, right? Because yeah. we were like children little yeah. children yeah <laughs> and you know we're watching these disney movies so we see lion king which he did the soundtrack for and it's you know that's a lot of our first experience with his music and then maybe later on in life we sort of you know get get to know his songs more that's right? 30 years but, uh, into his career I'm, I'm okay with it ending where it is i just thought there's i don't i don't know if there's a better way of doing it because that his life is what yeah, his true. life is you know that's what true. i mean like you yeah. can't fit it into a hollywood story necessarily mm-hmm um, it's just sometimes those little, you know, end credits, whatever you call that. I don't know what you call that. Is there a term for that? Epilogue? But just the, like, where There's are they now epi- kind of scene? <laughs> Not epi- Where are epi- they epi- now? <laughs> um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Alive. It can be done right. I always think of, um, Deepwater Horizon. 
Yes. Their Where Are They Now sequence was yeah. done very well, very emotional. Uh, but this movie just kind of fell out of place. And that's not fair to say because his life is what his life is. But to me, it was jarring. Yeah. But uh, anyways... I think that'll do it for our review of Rocket Man. Rocket Man. Phil, where can people find you? Find me on Letterboxd at Wicked Swami. Yeah, Wicked Swami. I uploaded uh, the movie I watched when I was stuck on a plane. So you can do that. Get hyped. That's yeah. A, yeah, I heard it was a it was a great one. <sighs> disgusting. <laughs> Adam, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter at Franny25, also on Letterboxd at Upreal Adam, as well as Instagram at Upreal Adam. Find myself, Scott, on Letterboxd at Upreal Scott. As well, uh, you can follow us on various social medias, Facebook, YouTube. Instagram, YouTube, yeah. obviously. Uh, if you yeah, like this video, leave a like on it. Leave a comment below if you want to join our discussion about Rocket Man. As well, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. And as always, keep it real. <laughs>